Hey there, John from FatSexBlog.com. Today to present the January 2020 Income Report. Now, before I get into the full presentation, I should tell you that this episode is sponsored by Ezoic, which is a high-tech platform for content site like publishers whose claim to fame is split testing display ads for higher revenue. They split test size, location, ad network, everything automatically, machine learning, hands-free to increase your ad revenue. I use Ezoic myself. Check them out today. Now, I want to jump straight into the numbers and I start with revenue. Before I break it down, I should tell you if you're new to fatstacksblog.com, the income reports feature seven niche sites that I own. They do not include fatstacksblog.com. That is not considered a niche site. Expenses and revenue from fatstacks are not included here. Completely separate, irrelevant. You don't see it. These sites that are featured are different niche sites in a variety of niches at different revenue levels, different stages of growth, et cetera, et cetera. So that, the point, I stick with the same seven. I feature them month in, month out. You can see progress or, well, bad results, <laughs> fluctuations, whatever. You can see how things are going. The whole point of these is to show you that growing a niche site business is possible and it can be a very good business. Most importantly, it's a fun business. I love it. So let's jump into revenue. Niche site one, ad revenue way down. In fact, we could jump to the totals, $40,000 total revenue across the seven niche sites for January 2020. December was 55500 Big difference in terms of $15,000 different, which is significant. Niche site two, this is an even Steven site, goes up and down a few hundred every month over the course of many years with not a whole lot of involvement from yours truly, came in at 5,200 bucks. Niche sites three and four, huge haircut, I'll explain why later. The uh, niche site three was 1,784, niche site four was 1,037. Both of them are down significantly, it's not just ad rates, I'll discuss it after the numbers. Niche sites five through seven, chugging along, total with all three about 150 bucks pizza night or two there not putting a whole lot into them although niche site seven is one i've got my eye on because in fact i'm putting the least amount of effort into that site and it's growing actually decently if we looked at actual return on investment it's been good it's 84 bucks a month but the traffic is growing quickly it's it's attracting inbound links things are working there so that's an interesting one i could be keep my eye on next up with revenue comes expenses. Total expenses was 7361 Notable expenses are hosting, which is Kinta, Kinsta, which was $1,200. Uh, Ezoic Premium Ad Program was $575. Bucks. Fortunately, the revenue from Ezoic Premium Ads was higher. Shutterstock, I invest about 800 bucks a month. I use a lot of images across my niche sites. WordFence, 529 bucks. That was a new expense, and the reason I had to, I had to actually hire the service to clean up my biggest niche site because it was hacked in late 2019. Super annoying. A bunch of spam outbound links were added in old posts, and I'm, I wasn't the only site that had this happen to. A lot of sites, it's been reported this has been a problem. Anyways, Word, WordFence went in, actually cleaned up the spam outbound links, implemented their premium plugin and set it up. So hopefully that will prevent it in the future. I also subscribe and use and pay for a variety of different software to run my business, such as uh, email autoresponders, themes, plugins, etc., etc. That cost me 4257 bucks. So total expenses, 7361 Now the other the third side of the coin, if you will, is content. Now content I deem an investment expense. My content investment will in, will fluctuate month to month. Some months I pour a ton into it, build up an inventory of content, or publish more. Other months I dial it way back. So January was a huge investment. And I will explain why I invested so much in content after the numbers here, but there is a reason I did so. So content uh, investment total for January 2020 was 18650 It's almost a record amount I've spent on content. Writer Access took 12000 of that. Text Broker, 250 bucks. I use Text Broker for some simple stuff like frequently asked questions, uh, very simple descriptions or step-by-step -step articles. Uh, so yeah, I still use them a little bit here and there. Uh, it's, it's just very cheap. Writer Access is quite expensive. I pay for the six or eight or 10 cents a word, usually six or eight. 
And so that adds up when you're ordering 2,000 word articles. So it quickly get to 12,000. In-house writers, I have two. Both are part-time. Both do, uh, they're awesome to work with. I, I really enjoy having some in-house writers. Uh, they really know their stuff. They clocked in at 3,475 bucks. I'm running a podcast for a niche site, niche site one specifically. I'm trying it. Growth is basically non-existent. If this keeps up, it's a total bust, but I am going to keep keep at it for quite some time. I want to see if it can get some traction. It's not a business niche. It's totally different. We know business niche podcasts can be very, very successful fairly easily. Even Fat Stacks has some listeners. But uh, this is in a totally unrelated niche. We'll see what happens. But it's costing me. I spent 1500 bucks uh, in January on podcast episodes. Basically, one of my in-house writers will podcast her content. And lastly, I bought a bunch of products to do product reviews, and that cost me 1425 bucks. I apply that to content investment because I'm only buying those products purely to create content. Total investment content, 18650 18, If we take that off, what I put in my pocket for January 2020 was 14050 bucks, which is a significant drop from previous months. But that's all right, you know, at this point of the... Well, let's jump into it. Why don't I just jump into it? Developments. This will explain all what's going on. First off, nobody's surprised. Low ad rates per thousand visitors in January. It's like probably the worst month of the year. That's all right. So there's hope. That's one of the reasons I poured a lot of money into content. There's hope. I expect that ad rates are going to go up. Okay, so I'm happy to invest. I can I can take a hit one month. All right, next up, topsy-turvy traffic. Sites 3 and 4 took a traffic hit. There was a Broadcore Google update in early January. Both those sites got hit 25%. I have no idea why it's the way these things go. I'm okay with it. I'm going to continue investing in them, not hordes and hordes of cash, but I'm going to slowly keep growing them. Hopefully they will grow. They had uh, really good growth in 2019, like really good. Uh, towards the end of 2019, I was really happy, and I thought, wow, these things could, can be huge pretty quickly. And now they got chopped off at the knees. So be it. Now, the, the plus side is Niche Site 1, which took a 15% hit in November from one of the updates. I'm already losing track. Hit record levels in January. So basically completely reversed that drop and then boom, surged forward. Very happy about that. Typically, Niche Site 1 does really well from mid-January right into May or, or June. So I'm, I'm in this growth spurt. So I'm not entirely surprised, but I am happy nevertheless because you never know. Hit record numbers in January and February is looking pretty good too. So with big growth and traffic for niche site one, that means I'm pouring on the content. I want to take advantage of it. I want to uh, really focus on top quality content and grow traffic through 2020. Ad rates are really low right now. That's okay. I'd rather have growing traffic than growing ad rates to a point, of course, but generally speaking, more traffic to me is more important because it's a sign of a healthy site. So, you know, I I know ad rates are going to go up throughout the course of the year. What I really want, though, is more traffic. Now, an interesting development also is Pinterest. I'm going to save the lion's share of this for the next income report because I'm still playing around, spending a lot of time playing around, actually. Pinterest seems to be on a resurgence for me for my biggest niche site. And uh, I'm no slouch with Pinterest over the over the last few years. I've, I get over 100,000 visitors per month from Pinterest. But I think something's going on here where I think there's huge opportunity. Uh, my numbers are exploding within the account. Traffic to the site is growing. I need to leverage that. I need to jump on this opportunity and really, really explode it. I, I think Pinterest has huge potential here. I'm just going to figure it out. So I'm not going to say any more about that. That's coming down the road. I'm pretty. I'm. In, I'm not pretty excited. I'm very excited about it because I would love to have as much Pinterest traffic as I do search traffic. It'd be nice to diversify that because basically that's a quick win. I get to leverage my content I already have invested in and get more traffic to it, which would be outstanding. All right, I already covered content investment, but I'm just going to say that I think it's going to be a big year on content investment. I'm also going to say this. I think this. I think this already started a year or two ago, but it's really about quality. Uh, Google is really focusing on ranking quality. I think you're best served investing in higher quality content. I definitely am. And you know what? It's not just for Google. I, I, 
the more I, the more I liken myself as an online publisher than merely a new site publisher or, or internet marketer or or SEO person, oh, I, I cringe when I when I looking for writers and and they coin themselves as an SEO writer. I, I won't ever entertain hiring them. If you're a freelancer and you coin yourself an SEO writer, there are publishers like me. It's because you know what you know what I I think when I read that I think oh, keyword stuffing garbage content fluff it's just not going to be good right I want editorial writer I want someone who has personality who will dig into the research who will write it engaging content that's what I want that's what interests me I, and I believe that that's what the search engines are going to want assuming you do your on-page stuff you still still a computer you still got to communicate to the computer aka Google what your article is about but this this SEO boring factual mind numbing content it's no place for it anymore now on the flip side on the flip side I, I know I know some some of you are saying to yourself well my niche is not that exciting most niches aren't that exciting in fact most niches are only exciting to the people that are looking for them so I get it there are a lot of topics most topics how do you make them interesting you can only do so much I totally agree I take the same viewpoint most of the content I publish you would have no interest in reading because you're not looking for it. that's the point of search right but you can at least hire writers who are going to make an attempt to take something that's typically boring but that some people have an interest in and make it even better and that's my goal that, that's what I want to do and that's what I'm working on and that's why I'm being very particular in who I hire to do the writing what I'm paying them, and so forth. The last development for January 2020 is I moved Niche Site 1 over to AdThrive. I applied in 2019. I had been asked by readers, oh, have you tried AdThrive? I hear they're good. I've heard good things about them. I thought I'd apply. I was approved, uh, which is no small feat. Apparently, they're fairly particular, but they, they did approve me, and we deployed sites, went live on January 8, 2020. Results are good. I'm, I'm happy with the results. I think there's room for improvement, so I can't come to any real conclusion. Ezoic was outstanding for me too. That re revenue was really high, so I'm just going to wait and see how it goes with AdThrive. I'm definitely uh, going to stick with them for a while here because I want to see where it can go. So, excellent outfit, really, really terrific customer service, friendly, helpful, knowledgeable. Uh, it's been a very, very good experience. Too early to really come to any conclusions, but uh, you know. Uh, it, if it were bad, I'd already dump them. So it's not bad. I'm sticking with them. I'm pretty happy. So that's it. Hopefully the February income report is going to come out sooner. I, things just got away from me in January. What with uh, Super Bowl and Oscars? No, I'm kidding. I didn't watch either of those. Although, you know what's cool about the movies on demand these days? It's uh, it's like, oh, wow. Look, okay, those movies are nominated for Oscars. If you're going to watch the Oscars, it's kind of more fun when you've actually watched the movies. You can watch them before and then kind of actually got a sort of uh, an interest in in the in the show because well you've watched the movies and you have your own opinions anyways that was January it was a busy month it, it's a blur so here it is end of February income report but late is better than never thanks for listening